Good day all, this is Ann Windsor. Welcome to our final episode of excerpts from the book John G. Lake, His Life, His Sermons, His Boldness of Faith. If you'd like to listen to complete readings of his sermons from this book, you can find them on my YouTube channel under the John G. Lake playlist. Since the first of the year, I have been going through this book and just reading short quotes that are in the book, Tongues and Interpretations, various things about Dr. Lake and the ministry that he carried out. And I encourage you just to go back and listen to some of the previous ones that I've done. I began with the beginning of the book, and now today we're going to begin on page 445 with an item called The Secret of Power. And this is a psalm, a psalm about the resurrection of Jesus, and it was given in tongues by the Holy Ghost to John G. Lake at 2 a.m., June 18, 1910, Cook House, Cape Colony, South Africa. The Secret of Power He is risen, he is risen, hear the cry, ringing through the land and sea and sky. Tis the shout of victory, oh, triumph is proclaimed. Heralds of God announce it, deaths disdained. Shout the tidings, shout the tidings, raise the cry, Christ victorious. Christ victorious cannot die. For the bars of death he sundered, Satan sees that he has blundered, as the angels The shouts of angels thundered, he's alive. Oh, catch the shout, ye earth-born mortals, let it roll. Till it echoes o'er the mountains from the center to the poles. That the Christ of earth and glory death has conquered, tell the story. He's the victor. He's the victor. Oh, and so am I. For this reason that my ransom he has paid. I've accepted his atonement on him laid. He, the Lamb of God that suffered all for me, bore my sins, my griefs, my sickness on the tree. So I am risen. I am risen from the grave. The grave of my sins, my griefs, my sickness. And the waves of the resurrection life and holy power thrill my being with his new life every hour. Oh, now the lightnings of God's spirit burn my soul. Flames of his divine compassion o'er me roll. Lightning power of God's own spirit strikes the powers of hell. God in man, oh glory, glory, all the story tell. (laughs) I have proved him, I have proved him, it is true. Christ's dominion yet remaineth, tis for you. Let the fires of holy passion sweep your soul. Let the Christ, who death has conquered, take control. He will use you, he will use you, Zion, yet has Savior still. Christ, the conqueror, only waiteth for the action of your will. I'm going to read that again now at a little faster pace. He is risen, he is risen, hear the cry, ringing through the land and sea and sky. Tis the shout of triumph. Triumph is proclaimed. Heralds of God announce it. Death's disdained. 
Oh, shout the tidings, shout the tidings, raise the cry. Christ victorious, Christ's victorious cannot die. For the bars of death he sundered, Satan sees that he has blundered. As the shouts of angels thundered, he is alive. Catch the shout, ye earth-born mortals, let it roll, till it echoes o'er the mountains from the center to the poles, that the Christ of earth and glory death has conquered. Tell the story. He's the victor. He's the victor. Oh, and so am I. For this reason that my ransom he has paid, I've accepted his atonement on him laid. He, the Lamb of God that suffered all for me, bore my sins, my griefs, my sickness on the tree. Oh, yes, I am risen, I am risen from the grave of my sins, my griefs, my sickness. And the waves of resurrection life and holy power thrill my being with his new life every hour. Now the lightnings of God's spirit burn in my soul, flames of his divine compassion over me roll. Lightning power of God's own spirit strikes the power of hell. Ha, huh, God in man. Oh, glory, glory, all the story tell. I have proved him, I have proved him. It is true, Christ's dominion yet remaineth, tis for you. Let the fires of holy passion sweep your soul. Let the Christ who death has conquered take control. He will use you, he will use you. Zion yet has Savior still. Christ the conqueror only waits for the action of your will. Oh my, wasn't that just wonderful? That will just bring your awareness of who you are in Christ up. It will stir your faith. It will cause a fire to burn in your spirit. Oh, pray in tongues and build yourself up on your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Next, we go on to three short exhortations. These are found on page 456. Dr. Lake, God purposed that the Christian church should be the embodiment of the living, blessed Son of God. Christ, living not in one temple, Jesus, but in multitudes of temple, the bodies of those yielded to God in holy consecration. God's real church, not in name only, but in power. Many members, one in spirit, one divine structure of divine faith and substance. Man, transformed, transfigured, and transmuted into the nature, the glory, and the substance of Christ. God's purpose that the Christian church should be the embodiment of the living, blessed Son of God. Christ, living not in one temple, Jesus, but in multitudes of temples the bodies of those yielded to God in holy consecration, God's real church, not in name only, but in power. Many members, one in spirit, one divine structure of divine faith and substance. Man, transformed, transfigured, and transmuted into the nature, the glory, and substance of Christ. Oh my. Next, the evil one toucheth him not. When the Spirit of God radiated from the man Jesus, how close do you suppose it was possible for the evil spirit to come to him? Hmm. I believe it was po impossible for the evil one to come to him. The Spirit of God is as destructive of evil as it is creative of good. I am sure that Satan talked to Jesus from a safe distance. <laughs> Woo -hoo. The evil one toucheth him not. When the Spirit of God radiated from the man Jesus, 
How close do you suppose it was possible for the evil spirit to come to him? Hmm. I believe it was impossible for the evil one to come to him. The spirit of God is as destructive of evil as it is creative of good. Hmm. I am sure that Satan talked to Jesus from a safe distance. <laughs> Don't you love it? Next, the real Christian is a separated man. He is separated forever unto God in all the departments of his life. So, his body and his soul and his spirit are forever committed to the Father. From the time he commits himself to God, his body is as absolutely in the hands of God as his spirit or his soul. He can go to no other power for help or healing. A hundredfold consecration takes the individual forever out of all but the hands of God. The real Christian is a separated man. He is separated forever unto God in all the departments of his life. So his body and his soul and his spirit are forever committed to the Father. From the time he commits himself to God, his body is absolutely in the hands of God as his spirit or his soul. He can go to no other power for help or healing. A hundredfold consecration takes the individual forever out of the hands of all but God. Next, we have a tongues. An interpretation uh, found on page 490. This was given at the end of the sermon, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Dr. Lake, Tongues and Interpretation. Thou art not far away, O God, our souls tonight are enveloped in the eternal God. We feel thee round about us. We feel thy precious loving arm and the beating of thy heart and the pulsing of thy heavenly soul. And we are asking thee, my God, that the truth of the eternal, capital E, shall be breathed into us forever until all our nature is submerged in God, buried up in God, infilled with God, revealing God. Prayer in tongues and interpretation. Thou art not far away, O God, from our souls tonight. Our souls tonight are enveloped in the eternal God. We feel thee round about us. We feel thy precious loving arm and the beating of thy heart and the pulsing of thy heavenly soul. And we are asking thee, my God, that the truth of the eternal shall be breathed into us forever until all our nature is submerged in God. Buried in God, infilled with God, revealing God. Amen. This next one is from a sermon or a meeting that Dr. Lake held in Battle Creek, Michigan, September 1913. A tongues and interpretation that was given. Therefore, fear not. For God is able to perform in you even that which he performed in Jesus and raise you likewise in union with Christ Jesus and make you reign in dominion over sin instead of being dominated by the powers of evil and darkness. Fear not. For God is able to perform in you even that which he performed in Jesus and raise you likewise in union with Christ Jesus 
and make you reign in dominion, dominion over sin, instead of being dominated by the powers of evil and darkness. 1916. This is found on page 519, a short exhortation here on the value of the ministry of healing. The value of the ministry of healing is not in the mere fact that people are healed. The value of healing is more largely in the fact that it becomes a demonstration of the living, inner, vital power of God which should dwell in every life and make us new and mighty men in the hands of God. The value of the ministry of healing is not in the mere fact that people are healed. The value of healing is more largely in the fact that it becomes a demonstration, a demonstration of the living inner vital power of God, which should dwell in every life and make us new and make us mighty men in the hands of God. Now we're on to page 523, statement by Dr. Lake. Sanctification is the cleansing of a man's nature by the indwelling power of the Spirit of Christ for the purpose of the transformation of the mind and nature of man into the mind and nature of Christ. I like John Wesley's definition of sanctification. Quote, possessing the mind of Christ and all the mind of Christ. End quote. Sanctification is the cleansing of man's nature by the indwelling power of the Spirit of Christ. For the purpose of the transformation of the mind and nature of man into the mind and nature of Jesus Christ. I like John Wesley's definition of sanctification. Possessing the mind of Christ, possessing the mind of Christ, and all the mind of Christ. Oh my, we're on to page 535 now to a tongues and interpretation given to John G. Lake while he was in Africa. It's called The Reception. O oh, list, or listen, tis the morning hours in glory, capital G, a shadow through the mists doth now appear, a troop of angels sweeping down in greeting, a welcome home rings out with joyous cheer. A traveler from earth is now arriving, a mighty welcome's ringing in the skies. The trumpets of a host are now resounding, a welcome to the life that never dies. Who is the victor whom the angels welcome? What mighty deeds of valor have been done? What is the meaning of these shouts of triumph? Why welcome this soul as a mighty one? Oh, she's but a woman, frail and slight and tender. No special mark of dignity she bears. Only the Christ light from her face doth glisten. Only the white robe of a saint she wears. She's but a soul redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Hers but a life of sacrifice and care. Yet with her welcome all heavens ringing, and on her brow a victor's crown she wears. Oh, how come! She thus from sin's benighting thraldom, the grace and purity of heaven to obtain, only through him who gave his life a ransom, cleansing the soul from every spot and stain. Oh, see, as you gaze upon her face so radiant, tis the beauty of her Lord you see, only the image of his life resplendent. Only the mirror of his life is she. See with what signs of joy they bear her onward. How that the heavens ring with glad acclaim. What is the shout they raise while soaring upward? Oh, welcome, 
Thrice welcome thou in Jesus' name. Rest in the mansion by thy Lord prepared thee. Out of the loving deeds which thou hast done, furnished through thoughts and acts which have portrayed thee unto a lost world as their Christ alone. O oh, hear how thy heavenly harp is ringing, touched are its strings with hands by thee unseen. Note that the music of thine own creating, heaven's melodies in hearts where sin has been. See how the atmosphere with love is laden, and that with brightness all the landscape gleams? No, tis the gladness and the joy of heaven shed now by rescued souls in radiant beams. Oh, that here on earth we may learn the lesson that Christ enthroned on our hearts while here fits and prepares the soul for heaven, making us like him both there and here doing the simple and homely duties, just as our Christ on earth has done, seeking alone that Christ's own beauties in every heart should be caused to bloom, showing all men that the blood of Jesus cleanses our hearts from all sin below, and that the life of Christ within us transforms the soul till pure as snow. When we thus come to the dark, cold river, no night, no darkness, no death is there, only great joy that at last the giver, G, capital G, grants us anew his life to share. <clears throat> I wonder if Dr. Lake wasn't thinking of his own wife when this psalm in the spirit was given to him. It's so precious. This woman, she radiated the life of God, the glory of God, the presence of her Savior. And how was it that she was able to enter into heaven's gates because of the cleansing of his blood? Hallelujah. And going on down here, it talks about the heavenly harp. And it sounds like the music that's coming from it is the songs of her own heart and the songs of those that have been redeemed through her blessed ministry. Hmm. Hallelujah. The notes of heaven's melodies in hearts where sin has been. Music that she created as she was ministering to others. It's been written in heaven, and now she hears it playing back to her on her arrival. Isn't that precious? Page 542, a statement by Dr. John G. Lake in 1909. Every student of the primitive church discerns at once a distinction between the soul of the primitive Christian and the soul of the modern Christian. It lies, the difference lies in the spirit of Christ's dominion. The difference lies in the spirit of dominion. The Holy Spirit came into the primitive Christian soul to elevate his consciousness in Christ to make him a master. He smote sin and it disappeared. He cast out devils and demons. A divine flesh from his nature. Now this is speaking of the primitive Christian. A divine flesh from his nature overpowered and cast out the demon. He laid his hands on the sick and the mighty spirit of Jesus Christ flamed into the body and the disease was annihilated. He was commanded to rebuke the devil and the devil would flee from him. He was a reigning sovereign not shrinking in fear, but overcoming in faith. It is this spirit of dominion, when restored to the church of Christ, that will bring again the glory triumph to
to the church of God throughout the world and lift her into the place where instead of being the obedient servant of the world, the flesh, and the devil, she will become the divine instrument of God. She will minister Christ's power in salvation, in healing the sick, in the casting out of demons, and in the carrying out of the whole program of Jesus Christ, Jesus' ministry, as the early church did. Every student of the primitive church discerns at once a distinction between the soul of the primitive Christian and the soul of the modern Christian. It is a spirit of dominion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're working on seeing that restored, aren't we? And the more we get our minds renewed with the word of God and realize who we are in Christ and who he is in us, that spirit of dominion rises to the top. <laughs> Hallelujah. In conclusion, this is the conclusion of our reading of the excerpts from this book, John G. Lake, His Life, His Sermons, His Boldness of Faith, and this is a tongues and interpretation given at Somerset, East Cape Colony, South Africa, June 1910. It's short, but powerful. Christ is at once the sinless descent of God into man and the sinless ascent of man into God. And the Holy Spirit is the agent by which this is accomplished. Christ is at once the sinless descent coming down of God into man and the sinless ascent going up of man into God. God into man, man into God. And the Holy Spirit is the agent by which this is accomplished. Whew. Powerful, powerful, powerful words. <clears throat> Something to think about. I hope you've enjoyed these readings today. I know I have. I've been enriched. I've been enriched, and I pray that you have also by this current reading and the ones that have gone before. If you haven't listened to those, I would encourage you to go back. They're short. Some of them are shorter length of time than this particular one. This was a little longer because I was finishing the final readings. Let us pray. Father, oh Lord Jesus, such a vision from your word that Dr. Lake does set before our hearts and our minds. Such a quickening does it give, Father, to our spirits and souls and bodies. Father, I cast these seeds out upon the hearts of the hearers. Father, open the eyes of their understanding, that they can understand and see into the great truths and revelations that Dr. Lake is sharing with us. Oh, Father, so many of us desire to walk in his footsteps and see his ministry reproduced in our lives, in our cities and towns and nations. Oh, Father, help us, Father, to be as intimate with you as he was, to know your mind as he did, to walk in your will as he has done. And Father, I thank you that you watch over these word seeds and give them the increase. Oh, Father, Holy Spirit, whisper the phrases into the hearts and minds over and over and call them higher and higher. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>